Hello, hello, hello. I am the Linux Mensch. Today, I'm going to talk about the Brave browser. So, let's get to it. So, I'm in a virtual machine of Arch Linux with the i3 window manager. And I'm going to open up LibreWolf. I type in Brave Browser. And we're just going to go to the web page. And this is the Brave Browser web page, the browser that puts you first. Okay, and uh, lots of information here. I'm not going to read all this stuff to you. You could just click on here, desktop, and get Brave for Linux. And I don't see anywhere on their website where they tell you what release they're on. Just looking here, if I could see. I think they would have a place here where you could find out what's the latest release. Anyways, I don't see it. So what I'm going to do is click on this. I'm just going to go to Arch Linux. And I'm just going to download it from the AUR, the Arch User Repository. And it's going to make this a little bigger. I'm going to go to the AUR. And I'm going to type in Brave. I'm going to type in Brave Bin. So you can see that it was updated on October 30th. So I'm just going to open this up. And I'm going to go down. And here you can see October 30th. What I'm going to do is uh, open up another workspace. What I'm going to do is copy this. And I'm going to open up uh, another workspace. And I'm going to open up my terminal. And I'm going to CD into AUR because I have an AUR folder. And I'm going to type in git clone. I'm going to paste that line in. And I'm cloning it. There you go. Now I'm going to clear the screen. I'm going to CD into Brave folder, ls it, and I'm going to view this package build file. So I'm going to do um, less package build. And I'm just going to scan down and take a look at the file. And we can see right here, we can see it's coming from Brave Bowser Downloads, latest release version. Okay, so we know it's good. And look at the package giver. And it's coming from ulrbrave.com. And here you can see it's coming from github.com. Brave, Brave, Brave Bowser releases. And it looks good. So I'm going to quit out of there. And I'm going to do type in make pkg dash sic sick i'm going to hit enter and it's making the package and now it's asking me for my password so i'm going to put my password in oop i'm on the wrong screen so i'm going to put my password in i'm going to hit enter and it's done so let's close the terminal and let's just refresh my i3 and Let's open up D menu. Now, this is I3 with my configuration file. So D menu is not mod key the letter D, it's mod key the letter P. The way I do all my other window managers, mod key P, and I'm going to type in Brave. And there's Brave. Let's open up. And there we are. We are at the Brave browser. So I'm just going to skip. Now, Easily import bookmarks from Firefox. I'm going to skip that. Uh, let's just say maybe later. Let's just do this. I don't want to send any reports to Brave. And there we are. <laughs> so I've been on Linux uh, for almost five years. And I used Brave for maybe a year, year and a half. Now, the thing about Brave Browser. It runs on the Chromium engine. It's available for Windows, Linux, iOS, and Android. Okay? And like I said, I've been on Linux for almost five years, and I used Brave probably for a year, maybe a year and a half, maybe two years. Actually, since I've been on Linux, I've been bouncing back and forth between Brave and uh, Firefox. Now, the thing is, is that I haven't used Brave for probably a good year, maybe a year and a half. So I have to kind of 
familiarize myself with it right as I'm making the video because I didn't do a practice session. Now, Brave is a very privacy oriented web browser. It comes with a built in ad blocker. So, with Firefox, you have to go and get a the uBlock Origin or some other ad blocker extension. And you can download it from the Arch Linux official repository, or you can just go into extensions, the Firefox extensions webpage and get it. And LibreWolf comes automatically with uBlock Origin extension installed. But the Brave browser comes with its own ad blocker already built in, and it even comes with its own search engine already built in. I'm going to go up here to this menu, pull it down, and I'm going to go all the way down here to settings. And like I said, I haven't used Brave for probably a year now or a year and a half, even though I did live in it for a good year or two. So I have to re-familiarize myself with it. And let's just go down and see what I would change or what settings I would use. I wouldn't leave continue where you left off. I don't like that. So I would open new tab page on startup. All I would leave here. And then let's go to appearance. Brave colors, same as Linux. I just make it dark. So I love the home button. And see here, show home button. Right now it's disabled by default. And of course I would just turn it on. And there it is. There's the home button. I love the home button. And anything down here? I think I just leave all these on. I wouldn't change anything else there. Let's go to content. And I just leave that the way it is. Let's go to Shields. And let's take a look at Shields. Uh, trackers and ad blocking. We have standard. Let's open up this. I'd make that aggressive. Upgrade connections to HTTPS. And make that strict. Block scripts. I think I'd leave it off. Block fingerprinting, I leave it the way it is, turned on. Block cookies, block third party cookies, I leave that the way it is. And then, let's see, block social, I think I leave everything else in here the way it is. And now I go to privacy and security. And I'm just going to leave all these on default. And let's go to autofill passwords. And I'm just going to leave this the way it is. Now let's go home. I'm going to click on this customize right here. And I'm going to go to top sites and I'm going to turn it off. I don't want that done. Brave news. I'm going to click that. Don't want it on. Uh, cards. I go down to the bottom here and turn this off and search I'm going to make Brave my search engine and actually it's already turned on by default like I said Brave has its own built in search engine and it's turned on by default so I'm going to close this and let's just I'm going to close to a whole web browser and just open up D menu let's open up Brave let's see how and there it is we're in the Brave browser. Now I'm going to go to YouTube and let's see if the ad block is working. Let's just go to youtube.com. And we can see up here the ad blocker is working. Brave Shields blocked one tracker. Okay. And this is the ad blocker here. Okay. And let's go to Linux Mensch. So we're at my home page, Linux Mensch. And we can see here, if we click it on, the ad blocker, they blocked 15 trackers. Now let's see if there's, any, let's see if it's blocking the ads. And let's see if we have sound. Hello, hello, hello. I am the Linux Mensch. My last video was talking about how I cleaned up and updated my configuration files. And in the video, I said, okay, so we see the ad blocker is working. Let's turn it on. And it tracked 34 trackers and it blocked the ads. And let's go to advanced controls. And there we are. So it's working. 
Now let's go home. And let's go search. Let's do Linux Mesh. So you can see it brings up Linux Mesh at YouTube and Linux Mesh at GitLab, my GitLab repository. And we could go, let's go home. Let's go into settings. And we could just go down here to search engine. And you can see Brave is the search engine that's turned on by default. But if we didn't want to use the Brave search engine, we could click on change. And then you have all these. You could click on Google, DuckDuckGo, Quant. I think that's how you pronounce it. Bing, Start Page, or Ecosia. But if I was using Brave, and I might start using it again, it's been uh, probably at least a year since I've used it as my main uh, web browser. I would just leave it on Brave. The Brave search engine is fantastic and it's on by default and I would just leave it there. And let's go back to the home page. Now another really nice thing about the Brave browser is that it has built in the Tor browser. Now of course the Tor web browser is a web browser on its own but Brave has built it into it. So if you don't know the Tor web browser, like I said, it's a web browser on its own and you can use it to surf the web anonymously because it sends your IP address, well, hides your IP address and you're surfing through other computer stations around the world. So your IP address is hidden. And like I said, Tor web browser is a web browser on its own, but the Brave browser has it built in. So let's take a look at it. Let's click on here. Now you can click on with a new private window and a new private window is just a new private window that all web browsers have where the history doesn't remember, you know, when you're surfing in a new private window, your history doesn't remember where you've been, but you can go down here and click on this one, new private window with Tor. Let's click it on and it's connecting. See, it's connected and let's just make that full screen. So we've connected successfully. Let's uh, do a search for weather. Let's see what comes up. And of course, when you're using the Tor web browser, regardless of whether you're using Tor within Brave or you actually download and install the actual Tor web browser, it takes longer to surf the web. The internet works slower because you're going through other computer stations throughout the world and it's hiding your IP address. So we see it brought up here. The first one, look at this, U.S. severe weather alerts. Let's scan down New York City, but I'm in Toronto, Canada. New York City. Okay, Philadelphia. So it doesn't know my IP address. It can't see that I'm coming from Toronto, Canada. Houston, Texas. And Dallas, Texas. And let's go home. So now we're connected to the tour. Now we could just uh, close this. And now we're back to the main Brave homepage. And that's it. In this video, I took you to the Brave web browser homepage. I showed you how to download it from the AUR, the Arch User Repository. And I showed you how I would change the settings to the way I like it. I think Brave Browser is a fantastic alternative web browser equal to Firefox and it's available in Windows, Linux, iOS, and Android. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I am the Linux Mensch.